Hello, I'm Atuba Judge. We bless God for today. Praise God, I'm so excited. Every time I stand, sit here to bring God's word to you, it's so exciting. You know why? Because I feel the presence of the Holy Spirit. And I am so glad to be used as a vessel, see, to bring forth his truth, to speak what is in his mind. See, we're studying 1 Corinthians chapter 15. But you know what? He's telling us what is on his mind. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Let's pray. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we honor you today. It is you who said man shall live by every word that proceeds out of your mouth. So today we receive our daily bread from your mouth. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. And every provision that we require today, it's coming to us freely. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Now, we, we, we continue from 1 Corinthians chapter 15. And yesterday we stopped at verse 6. So 7 now. After that, verse 7, 1 Corinthians 15. After that, he was seen of James, see, then of all the apostles, praise God, see, now, now this, and last of all, he was seen of me also as of one born out of due time, praise God, now think about it, he said, he said, last of all, I saw, now that doesn't mean I'm the last person to have, will, that will never see Jesus, no, that's not what he's talking about. You know, sometimes people read scriptures and they just get these wonderful ideas in their mind. That's not what he meant. Because many, many, several testimonies of people who, who have seen the revelation of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Holy Spirit. All right. Verse 9 says, For I am the least of the apostles. And that's really true, you know. You see, because as at this time, Paul was... was um, not, not, not even writing. As at the time Paul was um, experiencing what he's writing about, most of the apostles were old men. See, they, were, they, were, they must have been in their 60s and, and, and 70s. Think about it. See? No, just, just, just try to do the calculation in your mind. You know, that's why sometimes we, we, we should be careful how we relay. You know, we read about this, we just think they were young men, you know, doing their thing. Now, the disciples of Jesus Christ must have been in their... Uh, uh, late twenties, early thirties, when when Jesus walked the earth. Now, so just add 30, 33 years to that. You understand what I'm saying? And then you can now begin to tell. So when Paul says, "I'm the least of the apostles," because he considered himself an apostle. Why did he consider himself an apostle? Now I want you to think of something. The disciples, and this is, this is, this is how God does, does his work. And you can never fault it. See, the disciples were doing the work. And they've done this work for about 30, 33 years. Now, they were doing it with the vigor and the zeal they received when they started. But you see, God in his wisdom came in another generation to raise another set of people by himself. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. Isn't it amazing that Paul wasn't someone that Peter preached to and got born again? Or John preached to and got born again and started grooming them up and grooming him up? No! Jesus reached out to Paul by himself. Of course, other disciples like Barnabas helped him to stand, helped give him focus. But get what I'm saying. Paul came with a zeal. Barnabas saw his zeal. Barnabas didn't try to lay hands on him for him to have zeal. Barnabas saw his zeal. The other disciples saw his zeal. And Paul was careful enough to maintain his lane. What do I mean maintain his lane? He didn't let his zeal get quenched like many people do. They, they are so zealous for God's work. They, and then somehow, they, you know, someone tells them, you need to go 
uh, and and submit to a spiritual authority somewhere you know you you must be a member of a certain assembly and then he now goes and then he gets there and, ah, no, no 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 see in this place you have to be careful you don't pray in tongues you know like that like just calm calm down see this we, we've been here before you and then you begin to tone down you begin to tone down. they are killing you don't let anyone quench your spirit they didn't know how you got born again <laughs> except you got born again by them you know what i mean because because there are lots of people like that oh how do you oh that pastor preached to me that's why i'm following him till this day is that pastor that preached to me you you still haven't met jesus yet see when you meet jesus you will honor your pastors but you will find your way praise god yeah and let me tell you the beauty of that the beauty of that is you will be in position to strengthen your pastors that have been ahead of you you see because as we run this journey there is always a tendency that will start becoming weak at some point so if there is no one to put that fire inside of us, there you go, both so pranica. And, and let me tell you something. God knows how to keep us running. You know, sometimes we, we and, and the older ones begin to think, and this is not a good thinking. They begin to look at the younger ones and they begin to say, this is, these are the ones we are handing over the bat into. Hey, where are you going to? Where are you going to? No, God is not raising the new one so that you retire and say these are... No, listen to what they are saying. Rekindle your fire and run some more, praise God. God is not done with you. No, 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 don't think because you've been preaching for the past 70 years and you, you should... Moses was still leading them into the promised land and he was still strong enough to lead them. He was going to lead them to cross the river Jordan. He was going to lead them to get into the promised land and deal with those giants. He was ready to lead them. It was God that said, no, 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 no. Moses, oh, because of this thing you have done. Oh yeah, it's enough. You understand what I'm saying? That's so pretty. I, I, I pray, I pray. You see, sometimes we, 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 you know, the Lord was talking to me about something one time and then he said, look, if you want to live long, <laughs> I pray you can receive this. He said to me, keep your eyes on Jesus and what he is telling you and don't try to keep your eyes on what you have done. You see, sometimes the tendency is, oh, these are the things I have done. Oh, these are the things the Lord have used me to do. I have tried. No, you have not tried. What's the next thing the Lord is saying you should do? Someone is saying, eh, you know, I'm getting weak. So there is so much. <laughs> you see, that, that's a wrong thing to say. Listen. Go before the Lord and say, next assignment, sir. Praise God. And, and, and the Lord is going to tell you, oh, this is what I want you to do. Now, don't start talking like Moses. You know, I, I, I'm a stammerer, so I, I'm not be, I, I may not be able to do it. You know, you know God, God, Moses forced God to bring Aaron into the whole thing. Because God was talking to him and said, look, you're going to go before Pharaoh. And you're going, uh, God, you know, who am I? I'm, I'm, uh, God said, ah, you, don't, who made the tongue? It's not me. Uh, yes, you know, but you know, you know, uh, God, you know, God was trying to convince Moses, and Moses was bringing all the uh, weak points and, and telling God how he cannot do. It. And God just said, oh, "Moses, you know what? You know what? Sure, you have Aaron as your brother. Yes, he's coming. He will meet with you, and he will be your, he will be his God. He will be your mouthpiece. Is that okay? Yes, okay. I think, I think that is okay." You know, so just like Abraham, when God stole him, after he got Ishmael, God came to him and said, hey, hey, Abraham, I'm saying Sarah, your wife. Well, Abraham looked at it and said, he laughed. The Bible said he fell on the floor and laughed. And know what he said after laughing? He said, oh God, you know what? Let Ishmael leave before you. Now, there are many of God's children like that because you think you're getting old. And then God is telling you the next thing he wants you to do. 
He's telling you the places he wants you to go minister to God. He's bringing you thoughts and new revelation. You can be 90 and God is giving you a new assignment. He say, oh, how am I going to accomplish? Don't say that. The one who's giving you the assignment, he is eternal. And, and, and when he begins to relate with you as an eternal being, receive it. Don't start complaining. You know, oh God, ah, you know, how can I travel to... You know, that place, uh, by this time, Lord, I should be slowing down on my travels. You know, because, uh, you know, my, my legs are getting weak. Hey! This is why people die. God is standing at age 90. This is what I want you to do, son. Yes, sir! Stand up on your feet. You will find strength in you. The Lord is opening our eyes. He's opening our eyes. And he's restored. Didn't he say he will renew your youth like the eagles? Didn't he say that? Oh, no, wait, 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 wait. Wait. At 50, you're declaring the Lord will renew my youth as the eagle. At 60, the Lord will renew my youth like the eagle. At 70, oh, I, be, I should begin to look at the new generation that the Lord is bringing up. We, we, we are rounding off our work because there's nothing much, you know. We've, we've done so much for the Lord. And I look at the young generation and then, hey, doesn't he renew the youth of a 90-year-old man like the eagles? So he compares you to the eagle. Guess what? Have you ever seen an eagle grow old and dies? Have you found one? Do a search. Do, 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 do a study on that. All right. <laughs> I know this is the word of God coming to someone. Uh, verse 9. For I am the least of the apostles, that I am not meet to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace which was bestowed upon me was not in vain. Kaloba shikete. The grace which was bestowed upon me was not in vain. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hey. Oh, glory to Jesus. It's the grace of God. You know, Paul speaking to the Galatian church. He says, look, don't receive the grace of God in vain. Don't. You know what is to receive the grace of God in vain? The grace of God was mighty towards you, and yet you do nothing with it. You must learn to exercise the grace of God. Exercise the grace of God. Uh, 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 one day we'll talk about this praise God now let's go further but I labored more abundantly than they all now Paul begins to make his own boast yet not I but the grace of God which was in me he was on the go from day one praise God he began to preach Christ therefore whether it were I or they we so we preach and so ye believed. Now, if Christ be preached, we are all preaching the same thing that Christ raised from the dead. Now, if Christ be preached that he rose from the dead, how say some among you that there is no resurrection of the dead? Mm, did you see that? Did you see that? If we are preaching that Christ rose from the dead, how come now look at it. How say some among you, not foreigners. You know, sometimes people grow to that point, they begin to think they're analyzing the scriptures too much. Uh, if, if Christ, is it, is it three days or two and a half days or two days? When you look at it, if Jesus had died on Friday and rose on Sunday, Friday, Saturday, and the Bible says he rose Sunday morning, he said, you know, is that not today? So why did Jesus say three days? Did this thing really, really happen? There are people that talk like that. You know nothing. You know nothing. And let me tell you the truth. Until the Holy Spirit opens your understanding to learn. And that's why you should submit to him. Jesus said he will guide us into all truth. And I pray that you will submit to him to guide into all truth. Because my time is up. Praise God. God bless you. Have a wonderful day today. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.